Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'm going to talk about just kind of a brief beginner intro to podcasting and basically what you'll have to research to start your podcast in 2020. Um, you may be like me and have a great idea for a podcast, but you don't know where to start. Uh, that's how I felt, at least. <laughs> and then I started digging and reading for weeks and months on end this year, and I did a lot of research, and I'm hoping that this video will help you save a little bit of time on basically what you should be looking at, what you should be researching, and what there is to understand. If you're looking for a specific answer on every little last step, this is not the video for you. But if you're looking for someone who just started a podcast opinion on what they learned, this is the video to follow and you know what I mean. Just subscribe, like, all those things. So this year I started a podcast. It's called Reciprocity Podcast. I interview photographers, photojournalists, photo editors, filmmakers, and I put up the whole conversation basically. It's about an hour talk with each person and it's a lot of fun. But I didn't know anything about podcasting really when I started this process, which is kind of embarrassing because I work in photography and filmmaking and I work for news companies and all this stuff. So I should know all about all kinds of storytelling. So I'm starting this process and I started to do a bunch of research. Now I think everyone wants to get hung up on the technical stuff. What microphone do I buy? What recorder do I buy? What, you know, what do I name it? Like, what is this stuff? I will say the number one thing to figure out is what the heck are you going to talk about? Because podcasts are something that people really latch onto. And without a good story or a good topic or a good strategy, it's pretty hard to get people to listen to your podcast. Um, like I said, mine is about interviewing people. So it's an interview format podcast. And that's the route I decided to choose. Kind of doing it more for fun than anything else and to share information. But there's lots and lots and lots of reasons to start podcasts. Um, the number one thing, though, is just you have to nail down what is my podcast going to be about? What kind of content am I going to make going forward? What does my long term plan look like? You know what I mean? Like, you, it's easy to pick a podcast and be like, oh, I'm going to do a podcast about making podcasts. Well, you can probably make about four podcasts about that, you know? Well, if you say, I'm going to make a podcast where I interview, all kinds of radio hosts from across the country. Well, then you can make a lot of episodes about that kind of thing. So that's the number one thing you have to figure out is you got to really nail down what is your podcast going to be about and what's your long-term plan for making more and more content. I probably spent more time on that even after I had my idea locked down. And we've got an idea. How do you record this stuff? And for me, what I am basically doing is I have a recorder here. It's called a Zoom F4. Uh, Zoom F4 is kind of like a video um, four channel recorder. Now, this solution fits me because I also do video productions and sometimes I need something to record a microphone here or there and it made a little bit more sense. Um, personally, I find that there's lots of options out there. You can record into your computer with software like Audacity, GarageBand, um, Adobe Audition, um, and then even if you're interviewing people online, you can even use software like Squadcast and uh, there's another one out there like that. And, and those will actually record your Skype call directly into audio files. So you, it's not a Skype call actually, but they record your video call right to a uh, WAV file, which is an audio format. And you can just go ahead and edit straight out of your FaceTime call basically, which is really, really cool. Needless to say, there are lots and lots of options. For me, I planned originally before coronavirus to have my podcast recorded in person. So I chose a really nice dedicated recording device. I think it's still the right solution, but I didn't also expect to be doing all of my interviews over the computer. So with that being said, maybe depending on your format, you might make a different decision. If you and a family member or friend are recording in person, then you don't really care about having something like Squadcast that records online. But at the same time, if you know exclusively you're gonna interview people over the computer, well, maybe it doesn't make sense to invest in a recorder, and maybe it makes more sense to invest in a subscription to a company like Squadcast. And by the way, none of this is sponsored, by the way. These are just my thoughts and findings. But I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really neat that you didn't actually have to buy audio hardware. You could just use the teleconferencing software. Or you could use, like I said, GarageBand, Audition, things like that. And if you're starting a podcast and it's just you talking, or you talking and then adding other sounds or audio and not necessarily doing two or three people, I think using a software like Audition or GarageBand um, or something like that that's a free audio recording software might be the best solution. Because really, you don't need a super advanced set of things 
to record podcast audio. So we have some kind of recording device. Now, microphones. Now, this is a huge thing. So this microphone is called a Shure SM7B. Now, on my collar right now, I have a small lavalier microphone. A lavalier microphone is kind of a little clip-on microphone that we use in television, video, film production. Basically, that's very convenient and small and easy to use. I use this on a lot of my YouTube videos because it's hidden, it's simple, I don't have to set things up, I just clip it on my shirt and I go. This though is a vocal microphone that's gonna sound exponentially better. So if we listen here, this is a lavalier microphone. It's kind of similar in quality to like a phone microphone or something like that. I mean, it's much better, but it's a pretty small kind of pick up everything style microphone. And then this is the audio out of the Shure SM7B. This audio is designed for radio host, podcasting, and things like that. You should notice a lot more dynamic sound out of this. Now for the rest of this video, and actually probably before this too, I'm gonna use the audio from this microphone as long as it sounds pretty good. Now in between this very expensive microphone and using your laptop or iPad's microphone, there's a huge range. Now, I will say, I don't know if I'd get too hung up on getting the best of the best. I did, <laughs> so I didn't take my own advice here. But I will say, I think there's more important things, like the content being compelling before people get to knowing, oh, well this microphone sounds like it only costs $200 and not $400. Um, I think just buying the best microphone you can get that works with all the peripherals or the setup you're gonna use is the most important thing here. Things to look for would be that you want a microphone designed for radio or vocals, um, basically a microphone design kind of for radio production is the best way to go. Now you're going to find the SM7B in a lot of recommendations. This is kind of the default standard. That's the podcast they use on shows like the Joe Rogan Experience, and it's just a really common radio and podcast microphone. Now I will say though, this microphone isn't perfect. I have to crank all my recording levels to make this microphone even show up. And that's a big problem because that makes everything sound a little noisy. You're pushing the limits of your recorder. And I honestly think this microphone wouldn't really work with most recording setups that people want to spend money on. So the point being that the most expensive microphone might not necessarily be the best, but a good microphone is a good investment because if you have a good microphone, the audio you're editing is gonna sound better and clearer and easier to edit. So you're spending less time editing that audio and you are just focusing on making the podcast. Probably gonna end up spending somewhere between 100 and $250 on a microphone. That seems like a kind of ballpark range of things I found. And I think this is about 350, maybe $400. Um, and again, it, it is better, but like I said, I think there's more important things to worry about than just buying the most expensive microphone. So we have a microphone, we got some recording software, we got an interface, we got something to connect the microphone to the computer or the microphone to an audio recorder. Now, depending on the microphone you choose, there's be different devices. Like I said, I use an audio recording device that I use for filmmaking and for podcasting. You can also buy a thing called like a digital audio converter or digital audio controller, and that will give you like professional microphone inputs. Um, right on your computer, so it connects with a USB cable. And I think that's a really great strategy because then you can open all of these microphones into any computer that that device works with and you can record directly into, like I said, Audacity or Audition, uh, GarageBand, things like that. You can also get USB microphones that plug right into the computer and those are great too. Now what might be more important though than what microphone you pick is actually the room you're recording in. <laughs> which seems probably weird if you're not doing audio all the time, but we're all very familiar with echo and reverberation may be a little less common, but you might know what that means too. But basically a room has a way of making things sound different. So if I took this very expensive microphone and I went into a square empty room with hardwood floors and nothing on the walls, nothing on the ceiling, no furniture, it doesn't matter how good this microphone is, I'm still gonna get echo and reverb and, and the sound is gonna be affected by the room around me. Conversely, if you had a less expensive microphone, but you have it nice and close to your mouth and you have a nice room full of things like posters and maybe tapestries and carpeted floors and furniture, those things are gonna absorb echo and reverberation and make your podcast sound a lot better. So what I would say is 
So pick the best microphone that you can afford, but focus just as much on picking a good space to record. Now, there is sound paneling and devices you can buy to hang on your walls, but if you're like an apartment or a rental, sometimes you can't do those sort of things. So what I like to do is if before I had this office space to record in is you can go into a closet with a lot of clothing and as long as you're like facing things that are hanging up. So, you know, imagine a bunch of coats right here or you hang up blankets on your wall or flip a piece of furniture all crazy. It might look completely psychopathic, but having all that stuff around the space you're recording in will actually absorb a lot of those unwanted sounds and make your podcast sound a lot better better. So that's how you'd record one person. What if you're doing interviews? Well, if you're doing them in person, you just double everything you just did and kind of sit a little bit apart. And everybody wears their own headphones. Um, you can get headphone splitters for recorders and stuff like that. And, and that'd be a simple way to do it in person. But if you're not recording in person, you can use software like Squadcast, which I mentioned earlier. Um, or you can pipe your audio out of your laptop or desktop with a cable into your recorder. There's a ton of different solutions for this, ton of different ways of doing it, um, but that's been the easiest for me. There's a lot of faults with doing it that way, but most of my listeners haven't actually complained that much. Uh, they actually, most people have said it sounds really good. So I don't know the right answer there, but if you know you're exclusively going to do over the computer interviews with people, I'd probably really, really suggest a software like Squadcast and then get a more basic digital interface for your computer so your audio sounds great and then their audio sounds great and everything's synced right up. Now, as far as interviewing people on the other end of a computer, there are some things you can ask them to do. Number one, you can do the same thing you said to yourself. Put them in a room with lots of stuff hanging on the walls, maybe a closet, um, carpeted floors help a lot. So putting them in an area that's going to have less echo and reverb is obviously the same as with your recording, going to help their recording quite a bit. Number two, make them wear headphones. Everybody should be wearing headphones whenever you're doing the podcast. You should be wearing headphones. They should be wearing headphones. That way you're not getting speaker audio. You're not getting anything back to you. Um, everything goes right to the headphones, and then your microphone doesn't have to pick that up. It will pick it up a little bit, no matter what you do, it seems, but there'll be a lot less. And one way to help with that is to keep your headphones turned down pretty low. The lowest you can get them where you can still hear the other person. So you got them on the other end. Tell them to wear headphones, and if they can, get the microphone close to their face. If they have their own microphone, that's great. In my experience, people haven't. So make them put on like the iPhone headphones or something so the microphone's up close here. It helps a lot. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than a laptop microphone or putting them on speakerphone or something crazy like that. Microphone close to the mouth is gonna help your audio sound a lot better. So now you got this audio recorded. You've got it on either from Squadcast on a WAV file on your computer, or maybe you're using Audition, something like that. You have a file, or you have it in your recorder. So now we got this folder, and we got this file in there, and we need to edit it. You have a lot of options when it comes to editing the podcast. There's free software, like uh, GarageBand for the Mac, or Audacity, which works on Mac or PC. It's an open source software. You also have paid versions, like Adobe Audition, which is what I use. Um, all of these software should be able to handle editing a podcast. Editing a podcast, as far as audio editing goes, is actually pretty simple. Um, basically, all I do is cut out the ums and ahs and the negative spaces and things like that. One tool I end up using a lot is called a noise gate, and it basically says, hey, if something's below this level, a really quiet sound, mute it. And basically what I use that for is helping get rid of the things like the other person coming through on my headphones that the microphone picks up and things like that. I'll probably do a video on the, using the noise gate because I find it extremely useful for editing podcasts. But regardless, you're not doing extremely advanced things here. Basically all you're using is a cut tool and you're cutting pieces out of the podcast and shuffling everything over. It's pretty simple stuff. There's tons of videos online on how to edit podcasts, so I won't go into it, but I will just say, don't get hung up on paying for expensive hot software for editing your podcast, because most of them are probably pretty similar. Um, I use Adobe Audition because I already pay for Adobe, but I think most any audio editing software will be able to handle what you're doing with podcasting. So once you have your audio file done, you now have to get it on the internet. 
Um, contrary to what most people have thought when I've talked about starting a podcast, you don't actually host your podcast on Apple and then Spotify and then Google and all these different places. You don't you don't sit there and upload it 16 times all these places. You upload it to what's called a hosting platform. And that's a paid service where you pay to host your podcast. And then that produces what's known as an RSS link or an RSS feed. And that file is then loaded into those other platforms. And it basically automatically sends your podcast off to these other programs. So explain that even better. I pay for a company called Simplecast to host my podcast. There's infinite number of hosting platforms. I, I found so many and I researched these to death. And I will say, don't get hung up on it. As long as you pick one that's somewhat highly reviewed, you're probably fine. I found so many of them, and as many people as I asked, there was as many different answers as to what platform they use. I picked Simplecast because they had a pretty soft number of limits or limits to how it gets priced. So if one month I was super popular, I wouldn't get penalized financially. Uh, little things like that that I liked. Um, again, this is not sponsored. I have no affiliation with Simplecast other than as a customer. Um, but I looked at other one. I think it was like Buzzsprout or Buzzpod and um, Anchor and a million other ones. If you're doing this as a hobby or as a school project, one of the free ones is probably fine. You're probably not going to get that many downloads, and they're going to download. They're going to delete them after a certain number of days and things like that. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. Personally, I was doing it for a little more than just for fun, um, and it's. I think I pay about 15 bucks a month to host the podcast. That isn't a ton of money, but it does add up and. I don't know how I'll feel about this a year from now if I still want to pay for that. But as of right now, it seemed like an okay investment to me. So you have to pick one of these hosting platforms, and that is where you upload your podcast files to. Um, a good way to search for these would be 2020 podcast hosting reviews. Um, again, I found infinite reviews, tons and tons of options, and I didn't pick it at random, but I didn't have a lot of thought into which one I picked. I just read about them for a long time and kind of picked one of the top three that I had kind of narrowed it down to for my needs. So once you have it on this hosting platform, then through that hosting website, you can link it off to these other places like Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Podcast, Overcast, all these places. Um, again, my experience using Simplecast, it was fairly simple. I had to go. Sometimes I had to make a login on those platforms. Other times I just had to copy this link and paste it on this other site. Um, it wasn't super difficult, um, but it was a little bit of a process to kind of link every one of them. It takes a few days for everything to populate. So I would recommend making a little trailer episode that's maybe just a few minutes long that just says, hey, we got this podcast coming out. It's really cool. You should check it out, blah, 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 whatever. And probably set up all this hosting and all of that stuff and linking all these other platforms and do that like pretty early on. I mean, not like six months ahead, but if you're trying to do all this right when you're trying to release your first episode, I learned that it takes a little longer than you wanted. So even though I had a podcast done and I put it up online, the all the different apples and Spotify's and everything didn't even have the podcast because it hadn't linked all the pieces together. So that was kind of my difficulty. Everything else I think is pretty subjective when it comes to podcasting, how you want to market it, all the things you want to do. I don't have a great answer on all of that stuff. I think there's probably a million different answers as to what to do there. But I hope that this was a little bit of information and shared a little bit of insight from what I'm doing with my podcast, Reciprocity Podcast. Um, I know this probably wasn't as robust as some people would want, and I'm going to get a bunch of those thumbs down on this, but... I feel like sometimes you need a video like this to kind of go, well, what did this person do to start their podcast? So anyways, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was informational. Um, if you want to listen to my podcast, um, you can. Again, like anywhere you want to go, it's Reciprocity Podcast. And I'd be more than happy in the comments to answer questions or specific questions about what I found and what I thought uh, when I was looking at things as far as starting my own podcast. I am in no means an expert on podcasting. I haven't figured everything out by any means. I'm two weeks behind on my next episode right now because I can't get interviews set up. So I'm by no means an expert. But I did a lot of research, and I'm hoping that that research maybe saves you a little bit of time with this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.